Hello, and welcome to the second meeting of our online pregnancy support group. My name is Sandra Jones Keller, and I'm an intuitive pregnancy coach and a spiritual energy healer with the CCFL Global Academy. And I teach women and men how to have a deeper spiritual bond with their babies. And I started this support group because I know when I was pregnant, there were so many changes that were going on in my body, and I wish that I had someone to talk to, someone to lean on, a place to go where I could be heard, where I could be around like-minded people. And so I found that my friends were wonderful and my husband was great, but there are so many things that are happening that sometimes you just need that extra support. And so this is a place a safe and nurturing place where you can come to find that support. So I'm very excited today. I have a special guest with me, Dr. Tatiana Obahanich. She is, she has a PhD in immunology, and I'm, let me just get my glasses so that I'm not squinting so much here. She's the founder of Natural Immunity Fundamentals, a science-based resource for new and expectant parents, natural health practitioners, and health advocates. Welcome, Tatiana. Thank you so much for being here today. Hi, Sandra. It's very nice to be here with you. And I think I will have as many questions for you as you have for me. <laughs> so let's oh. see. Well, we did say that this is going to be an informal discussion because you have already done a couple of formal presentations in the Global Academy where very specific questions can be answered. But over the last couple of days, I have been collecting some questions. And so, we're just going to jump right in, and then, like I said, it's an informal conversation. So if you're watching us live, I'm ready. You can email your questions in, and we can address them. Or if you're watching this later, then just know that everything is available to you 24 hours a day. So I've got a lot of questions in. Um, so let's just start with... Flu shots. Now, I know when I was pregnant, I had a lot of recommendations from my doctors, and I've never gotten a flu shot, at least not as an adult. And so there's some pros uh, for it. There's a lot of people against it. And I personally did not receive a flu shot. How about you, and what are your, do you have any thoughts on that while you're pregnant? Well, so the way it happened for me is that I did get a flu shot and I really regret it because at the time when I was getting it, I wasn't really thinking straight and I was just following whatever doctor says. And I guess my thinking started a little bit later and that's why I'm now uh, doing my classes within the academy or outside of the academy to just alert people to follow their gut feeling and not necessarily what the doctor recommends. And so why is it that I regret uh, getting a flu shot? Well, first of all, um, we know that mercury is not removed from flu shots. Other vaccines, um, for children especially, mercury is removed, but flu shots, they still have it. And so this is being administered during pregnancy. It's not really a good practice. And so then we say, okay, so mercury on one end, but flu shot is there to protect us from flu. From flu and um, that's, that's a very important thing, right, to protect yourself from flu. But the thing is that flu shot is not that effective. Um, and every year it varies. And this year it is dismally ineffective, for example. So even the CDC came out and said that uh, the effectiveness of flu shot is like 18%. And this is nothing. This is just complete <laughs> nothing. So we are getting exposed to mercury and whatever else is there during pregnancy while not really getting much benefit from that flu shot. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we need to calculate. And um, I, I think I did cover a lot on flu shot in my uh, academy content in January. So um, to go more deep into the science of that, um, yeah, you can just, you can just um, um, listen uh, to that um, uh, session uh, in more detail. But yeah, so personally, I, I do think that um, you know, it wasn't worth it. I do think it now. And um, the thing is that there are other ways to protect from flu, and that's vitamin D. And uh, Sandra, we just had a discussion with you before we started recording how flu, flu is seasonal, 
and you don't really have flu during the summer, but then all of a sudden, starting somewhere in October, November, all of a sudden everyone is getting flu. So where was that flu, you know, in the summer? Well, it turns oh, out that, happened. yeah, yeah, have you wondered about that? And those are some scientists yeah. wondered about that, and they did find out that it's vitamin D that makes a difference. That if people are supplemented with vitamin D, that reduces um, the chances of flu. And they discovered the whole mechanism, molecular, immunological, how it works. And so if you were thinking, what are your choices in preventing flu during pregnancy or during any other you know, time uh, during your life, well, there are other options. And vitamin D, I would go with vitamin D now knowing that information. No, I love that. You know, I love something that you just said, that, you know, you were pregnant and you weren't thinking clearly. When I was pregnant, I had a high-risk pregnancy, and so I had a lot of stress. Um, it was completely unexpected. I went into the doctor and found that I had a couple of, two large fibroid tumors, one at the base of my uterus, I was already 41 years old, so according to the doctors, I shouldn't be pregnant, and I was going to have all these dire things happen to me. So talk about not thinking straight. Um, you know, each moment, I had to literally come back and ground myself. And I go to acupuncture. Like, that's my go-to and more holistic thing. So now I was immersed in Western medicine. And it was very uncomfortable for me. And I'm, you know, I'm trusting the doctor. So women are trusting their medical professional because they know. And so what I found was it was hard to get my mind straight. And it took a lot of energy and a lot of effort. And had I had, you know, someone like you to talk to, someone you know, who could guide me more on the natural immunity, I would have been so thankful. You know, so I just appreciate us having this conversation so that other women will not have to go through what we went through. Yeah, usually when we regret doing something after the fact, we like to inform others so that they don't follow in those footsteps and don't make what we think was a mistake and once we already um, analyzed that and researched that and we see well that was really a bad choice. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we are trying to make it easier for someone who goes, uh, who is after us. And uh, it's interesting that um, when I was getting flu shot and not thinking about it, it was like during the very early time of my pregnancy. Um, and later on, somehow, intuition kicked in. And yeah. I just started distrusting the medical uh, personnel, a medical establishment. I don't know when did that switch happen, but I think it was something when I was learning about uh, through prenatal classes, more about pregnancy process, and I went to our hospital, you know, HMO um, you know, organization, to take a prenatal class. And they said something about, you know, in this room, every fourth woman is going to get a C-section. And they just mm -hmm. said it so casually and so, um, you know, I, I really, it just somehow um, got a nerve, <laughs> got, uh, got on my nerve and I thought, I'm out of here, I'm out of, of this hospital, I'm not going to even be delivering my baby in this hospital. And I started thinking about home birth, okay? Mm -hmm. And so um, I went, actually, it's very rare that people do home birth, but it happened, and where I was in California, that was actually uh, possible to arrange. We had midwives who were specifically trained to, to do home birth, mm -hmm. so it was very safe, and um, I, I wasn't worried about that part, but I think that's when I started really looking into everything about medical system. Uh, mm -hmm. I started reading books like Born in the U.S. and um, looking at the horrors of you know, how obstetricians usually abuse their powers uh, with women, and so that was even more strengthening my uh, resolution to do a home birth, and it ended up being what I wanted, and it was successful, and I had natural birth at home, and something that I was very happy about, that I followed my gut instincts. Mm. But I think yeah, this I... condition happens at some point in our lives. Yes, Sandra. 
I, you know, I had uh, fantasies and visions of having a home birth, and when I found out I had the fibroid, even, you know, even up until the very end, you know, I, I knew that I had this fibroid blocking, you know, my cervix right at the base, but I still, like, held on hope, and probably about, I delivered at 38, I had a C-section, so I delivered at 38 weeks, so probably about 34 weeks, 35 weeks, I finally gave in and said, okay, this is not going to happen for me, and, you know, scheduled it after all, about women with fibroids who waited, and, you know, the, uh, the final straw was, my doctor was telling me, one of his patients who had fibroids, um, didn't schedule the C-section and wanted to try to do a natural birth and got to the parking lot of the hospital and died. So, you know, after that I said, okay, you know, let me just go on and schedule this. Um, but, you know, more about the immune system. So, food. Does food really affect my, my baby's immune system? And the, the types of food and the quality. Yes, absolutely. Does it really affect my baby's yes. immune system. It will. And uh, we have experiments, which again I describe them in detail uh, in the January um, session in the academy. But there are experiments that show if you uh, don't give animals like rats vitamin A during pregnancy, their baby's immune system is really compromised. So there are certain foods, uh, certain vitamins, like vitamin A, and I mentioned vitamin D for flu protection, so during pregnancy and beyond, that are so important in the immune system. And um, if you don't have them during pregnancy, well, um, then um, the immune system is not really um, strong to start with. And so how do we know, like, how do we get vitamin A. From pills, it's very dangerous. You can overdose and actually there is a warning that you shouldn't be taking excessive vitamin A from pills, you know, the synthetic vitamin A. But the, So the best way is to get it food. And the best book that I know of that gives you the best sources of these vitamin-rich um, nut nutritious foods is called Healing Our Children. So if you have a chance to read that for pregnancy and beyond, for children's health. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Healing Our Children's by Ramiel Nagel. So that's the book um, I would recommend. It doesn't really specifically talk about the immune system, but whatever nutrition that it recommends, um, it is so consistent with uh, building strong immune system and building other organs strong, like, like strong bones, strong teeth, strong lung everything. It's pretty much one one deal. It's like, it's not like Mother Nature said, okay, you need these sets of nutrients for the immune system and these sets of nutrients for bones and these sets of nutrients for your heart. No, it's all the same thing. It's one, one package takes care of the whole thing. So, yeah, so Healing Our Children is an excellent book. Thank you. And so when we talk about the immune system, like, what are we really talking about? Are we talking about staying healthy? Are we talking about preventing illness? Um, when you talk about the mother having a, uh, a strong immune system, is that naturally passed on to the baby? So when we say strong immune system, that means we are talking about susceptibilities or lack of susceptibilities to disease to infectious disease. So obviously if you live in a bubble and you never expose yourself to germs, you may have no immune system whatsoever and you will look healthy because you're just not being challenged with anything. But we do not live in a bubble. There are so many germs around that it's impossible to avoid exposure. So that's when it is really becoming obvious. If you um, get exposed to something, like someone sneezed on you in the public, and you have really, really mild symptoms, like maybe a little bit sore throat and that it goes away, or nothing at all. Then you know your immune system is strong. But if you, you know, relapse into something uh, really, uh, you know, hard, hard um, you know, um, coughing or whatever, something really strong, and you know you need something uh, extra for your immune system so that you don't get into the same thing over and over again. So that's how you judge. Um, when exposure happens, and how do you, you know, how does your body handle it? 
So say I was a heavy drinker and you know I was drinking you know most of my life or and then I didn't know I was pregnant for several months and then I found out or several weeks does that affect my baby's immune system or does it weaken my baby's immune system uh, for the so, first couple of years or indefinitely? The thing is that you know, in the United States um, there is a very strong policy about not drinking during pregnancy. It's just something that we have. But in Europe it's not that strict. In Europe, well, they don't do heavy drinking but I think they have a glass of wine every day and that's fine and they do it during pregnancy and that's fine that's culturally completely accepted so it depends what's there you know and how exactly it is but if someone is really heavy drinker to the extent that alcohol starts depleting vital nutrients in the body I think that's when the problem starts so vitamin uh, alcohol depletes vitamin C for sure and vitamin C is very important to the immune system and I'm pretty sure that there are other vitamins that are also depleted by heavy drinking so yeah you have to be careful of course but it's not like uh, you know other cultures other cultures are doing that and within certain limits and um, you know good quality wine maybe is fine <laughs> You know, it's interesting that you say that about other cultures because I would, I would actually go into the sauna when I was pregnant and I would limit it to about 10 minutes. But every time I went into the sauna, someone would tell me, you know, you shouldn't be in the sauna when you're pregnant. I mean, like 90% of the time. Like I said, I was very careful. I would only stay 10 minutes. I wouldn't let myself get overheated. And I know in other cultures, it's part of you know what people do what women do and so is it dangerous to the, the baby is it not dangerous I don't know if that you know that falls into your realm or not see well I'll tell you something about sana which is not related to pregnancy well I cannot really assess whether it is or not dangerous for for the fetus but sauna is really good for your immune system and let's oh. say it, it was tested outside of pregnancy so let's like not Okay. Uh, mix the two things, but what sauna does is that it enhances your immune system in a way that if there was a virus, it would react better to that virus. Okay, so it doesn't really activate your immune system because to activate your immune system, you need an exposure, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from some uh, microorganism, from some virus or bacteria. But it uh, it uh, sort of primes the immune system in a way that it would react in an in enhanced way. So going to sauna, I, I would I would love I think that practice in general is is a really good one and I know Japanese are doing that and I'm pretty sure it contributes to their longevity and good health that um, hitting up your body it's it's it should be good for the immune system. Yeah. Is it is it because you're heating up and you're sweating so you're cleaning out impurities? Or um, I mean to I me think it's it's, it could be one mechanism, but another thing, it could be mimicking fever. And there is a reason for fever when we are sick, is to enhance activation of the immune system. Okay? And so they were doing experiments with uh, sauna just to mimic that condition, just to heat someone up for one hour uh, to mimic that increased body temperature, and it's just accomplishing the same thing. So. That's that's where it is. Interesting. You know, and I actually just followed my intuition with it because even though I had so many people telling me I shouldn't, you know, I would check in with my body, I would check in with Mecca, my daughter, and you know, see how it felt. And each time it was like, you know, stay ten minutes and then get out. And that's part of, you know, what I teach is I teach women how to develop a partnership with their baby and with their body because they both have intelligence and awareness and so as we communicate on a higher level with our body and and follow the guidance then you know that's how literally I navigated my pregnancy by well. literally each step of the way connecting with my body, connecting with Mecca, asking her how she was doing and what she needed and she would you know, guide me step by step. 
okay, I need a little more exercise. I don't need, you know, I don't need that. I want these kinds of foods, that kind of thing. You know what, Sandra? Now uh, it really came to my mind one article that I read that uh, was talking about fever and how it can kill cancer cells. Okay? So, I mean, it's not really very well investigated, but it's possible that high body temperature activates immune system not only against viruses, but also against cancer cells, so to keep cancer in checks. So I'm thinking, well, if you had that intuition that you need to go to sauna for some reason, uh, not really knowing the science behind it, well, maybe it's something that was, you know, keeping your own fibroids from <laughs> overgrowing too badly and that's how you, you know, got through this. You know, maybe so because literally when I went to the doctor, I was only a few days late in my cycle and I looked like I was about three months already. So by the time I was in mid-pregnant, I was huge and I'm a small framed woman and people would look at me and like say, how are you walking? How are you even standing? Because I was so big and the doctor said, well, your Mecca's going to be born three months premature because your uterus can only stretch so much and you are pretty much at the maximum. And you know, like your doctor, they said this with complete certainty, like this is the way it is and this is what's going to happen. And I, you know, went home and I said, I don't think so. And so Mecca was never, you know, she wasn't premature and they actually said I would be bedridden for most of my pregnancy and that didn't happen either, but I did have the C-section. And so I just, you know, know that it's so important for women to call back their power to, to do their own research, to communicate with their bodies, to ask their immune system what it needs. Because what I find is that what's right for one person isn't necessarily right for another person. You know, someone may have their own path, someone may be vegetarian, and that works perfectly, perfectly well for them. And someone may be a heavy meat eater, and that works perfectly well for them. I don't think there's like one plan of action that works for everyone, which is why we need to get back to intuition, asking our bodies, asking our higher selves, asking our immune systems what it needs to stay healthy. Any thoughts on that? Yes, Sandra, I think that especially during pregnancy, intuition really um, is working really well, especially like maybe not in the beginning, but at some point it just takes over and even if you don't understand or don't have that scientific research but you have this gut feeling that this way is the right way and even if the doctor says otherwise um, it, it kind of uh, makes you very uncomfortable of course if the doctor says something that goes against your intuition but I think intuition is what people need to follow and especially in, in the pregnancy intuition is so strong because I think we are switching from being left brain people during pregnancy, we're mm -hmm. switching to being right brain. Uh, we are dominated by right brain, where intuition is seated. So, um, but this now I have a question to you, and I think okay. this is where I would really love to meet you earlier, <laughs> and yeah. to have these discussions or some guidance from you. Because once I was switching from being led by what the doctor says to being led by my own intuition and I decided I want home birth. That was just my um, you know, intuitive decision. It was very hard for me to convince my you know, family, my husband at first, that that's the right way. I just felt it in my heart. I knew that the hospital is not the right environment for me to give birth. But it was so hard for me to convince them. I was finding research, all kinds of research showing the safety of home birth versus hospital birth and it was still not, um, you know, it was still, I couldn't really get them on my, um, to support me. So I was struggling, I was crying a lot because, you know, this is something I want to do and I don't find any support from the outside and so Knowing, like I, I was never thinking that I could establish a communication with my baby and to maybe find that support from within to see what she wants and then be, you know, more strong with that and like not react so negatively emotionally to the stress that's, um, you know, coming my way. So that's the part that I think um, I would have really benefited 
from your uh, from your guidance and from your approach? You know, it, it, it's so critical to have support when you know at any time, but especially when you're pregnant because you're you're so vulnerable. I was so vulnerable. Fortunately, you know, my husband and I actually met in a spiritual group, so we have very like-minded spiritual principles. So fortunately. I had that support, and I had a couple of girlfriends who were religious science practitioners who could pray for me, who could help me anchor it. Because even though I knew the truth, even though like deep within I could feel something, when it's your life at stake and when it's you going through these, you, you need that outside support. And so, like I said, I, I cried through a lot of my pregnancy also. literally. I would go to the doctor, and what I needed was a fantastic surgeon, which is what he was. But the bedside manner wasn't so great, and you know, so he would say things very, almost abrasively, without realizing. Like, oh yeah, she'll be born three months premature. Oh yeah, she'll be in the incubator. You know, saying shocking things, and so I would go home and literally cry, and cry. But but that that part of me that knew the, a higher source would then anchor myself, would ground myself, would get would get still. And so when I had all of these outside influences coming in, then yes, I was fortunate to have already been on a spiritual path for over 20, 25 years at that time, so that I had something to hold on to. And that's why I've started this group because I know how important it is. And you know, the, the energy on the planet is shifting. And the babies that are coming in are more aware, they're more in tune, and they require a new paradigm of parenting is what I call it. And so I, I feel like we as parents need to keep up leveling our game so that we can reach the point where they already are. And so yes, it's it's important to have a forum like this where you can come and ask those questions, where you can come and get validation for that inner wisdom that you know is there. And another reason that I started this, because I'm I'm simply validating what people have already done. I've had women come up to me after workshops and say, you know, I knew what my baby would look like before it was born. I heard my baby speaking to me, but I was so afraid to tell anyone because I didn't want them to think I was crazy. And you know, my mother saw my baby. You know, so there's all these stories out there, but nobody's been talking about it. And so this is a place, this online pregnancy support group, where you can talk about it, where you can come and say, "This is what I'm experiencing," where you can come and say, "You know, I feel in my heart that this is what I should do, but my doctor says this, my mother, my husband, the death." But then you can come and be supported because you are so vulnerable, and especially if it's your first child, you know, just trying to figure out what the first three months for me was like. Oh my God, what is going on with my body? And so you you really need support, and you need love. You just need a place where you can come and lay your head and cry if you need to, so that you can be fortified with your own inner wisdom and your own power, and then go out. And follow your intuition, so that if something doesn't feel right, then you can question your doctor, or you can find an alternative. And we're not saying, you know, that the doctors are wrong. You know, for me, it's a partnership between everyone. It's a partnership between your doctor, your midwife, your doula, your husband, whoever it is. It's a partnership. But ultimately, you, as a pregnant woman. You know, you've got to follow your own inner wisdom because your baby is there to guide you. Your baby is so excited to be there with you that they will guide you. And you know, the more you're willing to listen and the more you become still, then the information becomes clearer and clearer. I think that was a long answer to your question, but yeah, I get so excited about this information. Yes, and this is what I also observe. I was born um, in Eastern Europe, and what I hear from my mom uh, is that the attitude to pregnant women back then or there is very different from what I experienced here. So all there, you know, pregnant women 
uh, it's known that you're not supposed to stress them out, that you do uh, the way they want. And basically, pregnancy is this holy state that you just cater to their desires and uh, you know allow them be and do what they want. But um, here, it's not the case. In the United States, I didn't feel that pregnancy is uh, as revered, and I didn't feel like the status of mother motherhood is as revered as in my own culture. Mm -hmm. So um, it was really difficult, and I think that it just this culture is somehow trying to be more rational. And when we are during pregnancy, we are more guided by intuition. And unless we as women um, you know, unite and we, you know, proclaim that intuition is the right way to go and that's what's working for us because we've all been through that and maybe we all, we all felt all these pressures um, mm -hmm. that we cannot even verbalize or explain and we just keep crying, right, during the whole pregnancy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so something I think it's for us to take uh, this into our hands and to um, establish that uh, part of our who we are and our powers. Absolutely, you know, and the work that I do and the work that you do and you know a few others of us in the academy I think is so critical to what we're talking about, to bringing the power back here, bringing the awareness and learning to trust the intuition. I think that's part of the problem is that we have been so left brain that we've been basically disconnected from our intuition and so learning to, to use it, learning to open up the heart, learning to open up your third eye and allowing this information that is there for you to come through because as we honor our process then everyone else will start honoring it also. But we've spent too much time letting the medical professionals and letting other people guide our own personal process. And I think now is a time to reclaim our power and you know stand in what we feel in our hearts because we are the ones that have the regret about the thing that happened. I mean, I remember in the hospital, um, you know, after my C section, you know, my my agreement with my husband was that he was going to stay with Mecca while I, you know, they fixed me up. And so, you know, he was kind of the primary for the first several hours. And I think it's within 24 hours they give, you know, the baby the hepatitis B shot or something. They start giving them shots right away. And we had already discussed, you know, no shots for her. And so the doctor actually said to him, well, if you will not give her this shot, I will not be your doctor. Like that's how dramatic it was. It's like, well, you know, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna take my toys out of this box and I'm gonna go over here and not play with you. And that could be really terrifying for a lot of people, but we had already decided that we weren't gonna do that. And so he said, okay, that's your choice. And so the guy like literally made him sign a form that, you know, we we're not going to give her the shot, and so therefore, you know, he was off the hook kind of thing. So it can get very dramatic and very tense. And so you really need your foundation and your support system to be able to stand up to people who are trying to lead you in a direction that you don't want to go. Yes, absolutely. And um, I think when you're really strong about what you want, even if it looks like no one else is cooperating, I think the universe will find a way for you to make it happen. And the way my story ended with, um, well, obviously we, I was insisting to have a home birth, but we needed a hospital backup just in case. That was a procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the hospital was like 10 minutes away. And that hospital was um, offering tours so that you can go there ahead of time and take a look and see what's, uh, what you're going to expect when you arrive there. So um, I decided uh, to take my husband to the tour of the hospital and we went with a group of other you know, expecting parents. And what happened there, well, the, uh, the, the whole atmosphere in that hospital was so tense. There was so much stress in the air. All these nurses are running around really stressed out. 
Uh, and we went into this room, which was kind of small for so many people that they allowed at one time. And it was probably very stuffy. And my husband almost fainted. Yeah. And that gave him an idea that he's not coming back to this hospital. <laughs> and then after that, he was just with me 100%. And he said, well, we're just going to do home birth. Fine. <laughs> so I think the universe found a way to um, gain um, you know, his support for me. And then everything else went perfect. So I think you just have to believe in what you need for yourself. And eventually, that will happen. That's great. That's my story. Up, I have one more question that's come in. And sure. so, what about vaccinations while pregnant? Um, I know, you know, I've heard a lot, you know, a lot of from different sides. But just kind of, what are your thoughts about getting vaccinated while pregnant? Well, so we discussed the flu shot and that there is mercury in there. Now, um, and that it's not really that effective. There is also another uh, vaccine that uh, they are now recommending uh, during pregnancy, and that is DTaP. Uh, that they may or may not have mercury. You have to check, and you just have to look at your particular, um, uh, you know, the vial, because there are many different um, variations and different manufacturers that make that one. But one thing that they all have, the DTaPs, all DTaPs have aluminum, and that's a very damaging. Um, element. It's there. Uh, it's called adjuvant, so it stimulates the immune system to make antibodies, but it's very detrimental to neurons. Mm. And so um, what happens when this vaccine with aluminum is injected, there were experiments done in animals. They inject it under the skin, but then this aluminum ends up in the brain. So somehow uh, it's being picked up and being carried to the brain, and it kills neurons. Right. And in addition to that, it does many other different things. And um, this vaccine has never been tested during pregnancy. I mean, it was developed for you know regular times, and right now they're just recommending it during pregnancy. Well, because uh, that's like a new stage or new era of, uh, uh, of for, for this vaccine to be um, introduced. Mm -hmm. uh, but another thing is okay. Now we looked at the aluminum. Um, is it worth doing that for the prevention of whooping cough? Because that's what it's given for. It's DTAP. Um, it's um, the part of, um, of um, whooping cough prevention is a cellular pertussis, AP, at the end. And so what's happening now in the United States and many other countries is that whooping cough is now caused by a strain of bacteria, which is vaccine resistant. Oh OK? So you get loaded on aluminum. It causes whatever damage that it's going to cause. And then you can still get whooping cough. And you can still transmit the whooping cough to the baby. So again, uh, we are doing something that uh, which is very questionable on the safety side for, for, the, for the sake of protection from what we know is a horrible disease, as whooping cough. But would that vaccine actually protect it under new strain evolution it's very unlikely to happen. Mm. Wow, Tatiana. You know, there's just so much here. And so I know that you've done a couple of presentations in the academy, specifically around pregnancy and the immune system. So if people want more details, I think you did something in January about pregnancy and the immune system so that people can get far more detail. And you also just did an amazing presentation about breastfeeding versus formula. And so where can people find that? So that is on the calendar. Uh, it was recorded a few days ago, I think March 17th. So if people um, log into the Academy membership, and they can find that lecture on the calendar and watch it. OK. Well, thank you so much. We're going to wind down now. Like I said, I could talk to you forever. But these are <clears throat> kind of short segments, and it's more of an informal setting so that people can see your more formal presentations on the Academy. So I just want to thank you for joining us, whether you're joining us live or on the recorded version. And please share this information with your friends, because like I said, I know when I was pregnant, I really needed a place like this where I could come, where I could find like-minded women who could support me on my journey. So I'm very excited. So we meet the first and third Thursday of every month for the next six months. 
8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Look on the Academy website for more of my uh, presentations. I've done stuff on uh, spiritual principles, uh, thrills and chills, the husband's perspective of a high-risk pregnancy. So there's a lot of great stuff on the Academy. And until next time, have a fantastic day.